Hi and welcome to Zoom TV, the show where we explore everything that flies, drives and floats and invite you along for the experience. Speaking of along, today we tag along with the 2013 Go Topless Jeep Day. It's, uh, it's all about socialising with like-minded people. Thanks to City Toyota, we check out the new FJ Cruiser. It is designed to be a genuine off-roader. And thanks to Asanda, I meet a family-owned and operated car dealership in Adelaide. Our employees and our staff really have ownership of their job. And our Asanda celebrity hitchhiker is V8 supercar driver Dean Fiore. That's one of the things that kill us is the temperatures, going to places like Clipsal and Darwin. So get ready. Dan, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, but... Uh, What's wrong, man? Well, if you, if you looked around, there's no, there's no one else that's topless. It's just us. What's going Dan, on? What? it's Go Topless Jeep Day, not Go Topless Jeep Day. Oh! Dan, seriously. Oh, no. Mate, come on, we've got, we've got to go get our shirts on. Well, that's, did you bring a shirt? Well, it's in the crew car. Oh, I'm not getting out of the car with no one else. You've mate, got to drive to the crew car. Mate, that's the last time I book a well, gig. Seriously, Go Topless Jeep Day? What? <sighs> I'm joined by the organisers of this Go Topless Jeep. Wonderful day. How are you, Vic? Yeah, good, Dan. Good to meet you, Davis. Yeah, you too, Dan. Hey, this is, a, this is an event that's worldwide, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's been going uh, for seven years worldwide, started in America. Um, this is our second year of hosting it in WA. So the turnout today has been absolutely sensational. Yeah, is it bigger than last year? Definitely, we've doubled our numbers. Um, we had 50 cars last year, and I think this year we've hit 106. So it's been a great turnout by the wow. Jeep community. Yeah, there's some stunning vehicles around. Do you need to be fully kitted out to, to bring your car along? No, not at all. You can come straight off the showroom with your car you just bought yesterday. It's open to anybody, any age group, uh, any Jeep. So what happens from here? Uh, we're leaving here Welshpool uh, with the convoy, heading north up the freeway through Perth to Yanchip National Park. And then from there, we've got an area segregated off so we can uh, have barbecues and socialise and basically use what Yanship National Park has to offer. Kick some tyres while we're there, no doubt. Oh, look, there'll be a lot of Jeep talking <laughs> going on, I think, within this crowd. So what's the essence of this day, guys? What's it about? Well, it's basically getting the Jeeps out on a, on a nice day, take the tops off if we can or if you want to, get together with like-minded people and to make it a little bit different, we've included uh, a, a run for the uh, Cancer Society. Mm. So we're, we're collecting uh, money and we're gonna donate that to the uh, Cancer Society. So last year we had $250 out of 50 cars. This year we're already selling out of tickets, so it looks promising. More the better. Yes, definitely it is. Isn't that wonderful? And it's not just a day about blokes too. You'd be mistaken to think that because a lot of ladies have come here with their cars. Oh, certainly. Some yeah. of them really kitted out, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Do they go topless as well? Um, <sighs> we've got something on there. Yeah, don't come we, on, uh, we got we to yeah, go. Come on. Can, you, can you park my car? Yeah. We've got it here. Oh, can't be too hard. As you all know, this is a global thing. It's happening all the way around the world. Uh, this is the second time it's been held in Perth. And uh, I know the intention is, and we'll fully support it as much as is necessary to continue to make sure that it is an annual event. John, how are you? Morning, Aaron. How are you? I'm really good. You got me up early for a Sunday, I tell you. Oh, come on. I'm up <laughs> always, every day, and particularly Sunday. It's a good day. Mm, but not for me. Not for me, John. <laughs> But tell me what we're up for. This is like, there's people everywhere and there's yeah. jeeps everywhere. I know. Well, this is global. Just just WA. It's not just Australia wide. It's global, and it happens once a year. And it's called the Go Topless Day, as you can see. All these are hard top, soft top. So this is Go Topless. Got a fantastic day for it. So it's brilliant. This is the second time they've had it in WA. We've got a lot more people here this year than last year, and hopefully next year it'll be an annual event. It'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, if you're involved with it, John, it will be. Anything you put your name to just goes from small to huge. Well, you know, if you, if you stand still, you're going backwards. You've got to keep on the front foot pushing all the time. And look, I'm 
wrapped in it. I've had the Jeep franchise now since uh, February last year. I'm Australia's top selling Jeep dealer. We're doing about 60 new Jeeps a month and not everyone here has bought a car from me yet, but they will hopefully. <laughs> uh, but I think it's fantastic. And John, what do you think of the new Jeep, the colour scheme? I suppose the oh, design. look, Jeeps have they've had a, they've had a reduction in price. They've had a dramatic improvement in their in their quality, uh, their styling, and their off-road performance. I mean, it's it's one of the best things I've done in the car business in the last ten years. I'm wrapped. Now, John, you must love the Jeep. Every other car seems to bring people together, but I tell you what, the Jeep seems to yeah. encourage them. Yeah, well, there's a common purpose. There's a camaraderie. I think they're resourceful people. They're independent people. They're adventurous people. They want something just a little bit different. And some of these vehicles here, really, by the look of it, I'm not an off-roader myself, I can see they get some really serious, heavy off-roading work. Mm, well, I like the look of them. Now, Dan and I are taking one up with the crew up to the uh, Is uh, Is there a problem if we don't bring it back, John? <laughs> well, no, the only problem is I'd well expect you to write out a cheque, all right? <laughs> Just know you. John, thank you very right, much. I love you getting involved in stuff thank like this. You. It's a lot of fun. And you enjoy the day, all thank right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, after the break, we hit the road and head to Yantship with the team here from John Hughes Jeep and, of course, the 2013 Go Topless Jeep Day. Dan and I might have to get a little bit topless. That's after the break on Zoom TV. Well, it turns out these big tyres make it a bit hard to park, but I don't think I've done such a bad job. I don't think anyone will notice. You know, it's rare human beings live for 100 years. It's even rarer that a company survives 100 years. For us human beings to live for 100 years, we've got to live healthy and rely on a fair bit of luck. For companies to survive for 100 years, they can't rely on luck alone. They have to trade healthy. What does that mean? Well, that means they have to provide outstanding customer service. They've got to be transparent. They've got to be honest and open. And they've got to employ a group of people that believe in the same values as they do. Well, today, thanks to Asanda, we're in South Australia visiting a family-owned automotive group, Mourn Team Ford, who this year are celebrating 100 years in the industry. And you know what that means. Gets me excited. Birthday, birthday cake, birthday celebrations. In 1912, not long after the car replaced the horse as the chosen means of transport, Mourn Team opened up their doors, trading under the company's original name, Barons and Marshall named after the founding partnership of Herbert Behrens and Eric Marshall. Shortly after inception, two new partners joined them, first Alfred Ross Team and then Frederick Milton Morn. In 1920, the official trading name was changed to Morn Team. Concentrating first on the repairing and servicing of the popular Model T Ford and then embarking on the buying and selling of used cars and trucks to the public. As the demand grew for cars, so did the demand for parts and accessories. Morn Team recognised this and as such started to offer spare parts and accessories, even oil. Over the coming years, the company would continue to steadily grow and mature. In 1958, they were proudly appointed with an official Ford franchise. In 2000, Mazda joined the company and in 2002, Hyundai joined the group. The family-owned Mornteen Auto Group now employs over 170 people across their four dealerships. And you could think to yourself, that's a pretty big achievement. But no, not them. You could also think they've won a stack of awards over the last few years. Their achievements, but no, not them. What they do love and what they do think is their biggest achievement is their employees. They're very talented, very dedicated employees. And you know what? It actually shows. Nowadays, Morn Teen offer new Ford, new FPV, new Hyundai and stock a complete range of the best pre-owned cars and commercials. They supply spare parts for most vehicles all around Australia and can service and repair all makes and models. They even have a panel repair facility that can fix anything from a small dent through to a complete respray. How are you, Daniel? Aaron, how Mate, are you? Thanks for having us all the way over here to South Australia and to celebrate your 100th birthday. That's an awfully long time. It's a very long time. We're very, very proud of that achievement. And what's the story? How, how, how does a business go from one to 100? Well, from a very proud families and the Mourns and the teams, um, there's been five owners throughout our, throughout our history in the 100 years, starting off with Model T and Singer and things like that. What makes you different? Why would I come here? Well, you can walk into any dealership and probably feel at home, but you'll notice that our employees and our staff, who we see as the lifeblood of our, of our business, really have ownership of their job and make you feel so welcome 
And shopping here, coming in here is just so easy. We make it a one-stop shop for all of our people. I'd like to just give you a very quick story. My father's been involved in the business for 36 years. Um, started sweeping the floors in our spare parts department. Um, came through the ranks, I suppose, really worked hard. And now to own the business is a sensational story. And I think our staff actually take some solace from that and, and really enjoy that story. Um, and it embraces them, I think, for their future. It doesn't matter which Mourn Team dealership you drop into, you'll immediately trip over the common thread that keeps every staff member together. It motivates them to come to work, it motivates them to do a good job, it motivates them to provide exceptional customer service. But have you worked it out yet? It's you. They really want to help you. They actually do. If you want to experience this dedicated customer service, drop into any one of the Mourn Team dealerships. We've got a zoomtv.com.au and follow the links. But don't forget, they are turning 100, so you might have to speak up just a little. So now we finally made it to the airship. What a drive, I enjoyed oh, it. Beautiful day too, and how, how hospitable are the people here? It is great. I like the fact that at these events, especially the Jeep events, everyone just shares stuff and mm. shares their food and their oh, drinks. It's awesome. Idea. What's going on? Hey, what's this? Uh, fellas, I was just uh, I was helping you out with the barbecue. I thought like it was. I thought yours. you said these were yours. I thought I thought you organised it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, mate. No worries. He'll be back after the break. I'll leave with Dan. Talking to one of the organisers. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome back to Zoom TV. Now I'm joined by one of the event organisers. Vic, how are you? Good, mate. You've organised this event, or you've contributed to the 2013 Go Topless Jeep Day. I yep. mean, what an event to be involved in. It looks like it's worked out really well. Oh, look, it's, it's just been a fantastic event. The, the day has gone off uh, problem free, as you could probably see by meeting some of the people and having a chat with them. They're just a great group of guys. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been fantastic. I wasn't laughing at you, but we, uh, Dan and I met some of the uh, locals before. We, uh, we were trying to actually uh, help them with their barbecue, and yeah. uh, there might be a problem a little bit later, but that's cool. That's cool. We thought we were contributing to uh, helping them eat. <laughs> you might hear about it or you might right, not hear about right. it. <laughs> now, uh, what makes you as a company get involved in such a great day? Oh, look, uh, we've always been uh, big into the Jeeps and, and big into this thing with the clubs and, and the get-togethers and stuff, and uh, we sort of found an opportunity to sort of join in with everybody. Um, it's, it's been fantastic, and a lot of these people I, I also consider our personal friends. Mm. Well, that's the thing I like about days like this. If you have a car and a common passion, it really brings you together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and what a better way to go. I mean, with the family and everything else involved, it, I think it makes a very nice, relaxing atmosphere for everybody, which is which has really been good. Okay, now you don't just support the event. You actually have a Jeep just here as we can see behind yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, we've got our Jeep here, a 2006 TJ Wrangler that uh, we've kitted up quite a bit. Um, we do quite a bit with it and uh, sort of show it off when we can. Okay, well so tell us about the Jeep. Why are you so passionate about it? Uh, I've always been into to cars and modifications and things and uh, after we, we moved to Australia uh, we came up with the idea to grab uh, the American made car, uh, the, the Jeep, uh, and sort of kit it up and, and fit it up. Um, what really got us involved with it is uh, we just decided that we, we thought we could make the parts better than what we've been finding, um, and we just went for it. That's um, awesome. Ever since then, we've just uh, we've never looked back, and uh, fortunately for us, uh, it's gone over very well. Now, you know, I heard that you wouldn't have won the war if it wasn't for the Jeep. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, how you going? You know those guys who've been at the barbecue? Well, apparently, we've burnt their sausages. Okay. Well, Vic, it's been great. It's been Absolutely. great catching up with you. Yeah, Thanks for your luck. time. Good Thanks luck. for having us along. Not a problem. And we might yeah. come back good next luck. year. We've got to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Do you remember when owning a four-wheel drive meant you were extreme? You went off-road. You could pack your family up, head away on that great family camping trip. You could drive directly to your favourite fishing spot instead of your favourite country club. Wow. Thanks to the all new FJ Cruiser, Toyota have combined a bit of old with a little bit of new. And apparently, this thing, it'll take you anywhere. The brand new FJ Cruiser is based on one of Toyota's best loved four wheel drive beasts, the FJ40, which first appeared in 1960. That's over 50 years of four wheel driving history, which the FJ takes to another level. When Toyota first released the FJ40 as a concept car in 2003, the response was so overwhelming they had to release it as a production car. Now we finally have a true off-road vehicle with a little bit of history 
and the comfort of everything Toyota has picked up over the last 50 years. Wayne, there's a bit of history in the FJ. How did it first come about? Uh, the FJ started with uh, Toyota's start in the uh, hydroelectric scheme in New South Wales. And that was Toyota's start in Australia in a really off-road, rugged environment. And how do you think Toyota have done bringing the old FJ into the new era? I reckon they've done a great job. So they've utilised the whole range of the Prado running gear. You've got a car that has Toyota's quality, durability, reliability, uh, and the unique look of a, of a brand new car. The FJ has a really good clearance, so you can pretty much take it anywhere. It's got water repellent seats, so you can just wash them out. It's got big, chunky door handles and gear levers, so you can get hold of everything in gloves. And it's got a DVD player, a temperature gauge, and an inclimeter. Don't know what that is? Well, that makes sure you don't roll over. When was the last time you needed to know how close you were to rolling over? If that doesn't say off-roader, I don't know what does. The interior is built for functionality, not flair, and the same can be said about its drive. It really does handle off-road driving really well. The 4.0-litre V6 petrol engine is matched with a 5-speed automatic gearbox. And you don't have to worry about filling up all that often because you'll get 630 k's per tank. But I don't want you to get the idea that this new FJ is boring. Yes, it might share a few characteristics with its granddad, but it's a modern car with modern features. The FJ Cruiser comes with rear parking sensors as well as rear view camera that displays in the rear view mirror. This makes parking it an absolute breeze. Plus, and this is a world first, the eight speaker stereo system has been built into the roof so the ceiling literally acts as a speaker. Now that's surround sound. <laughs> this car was not designed to be a mum's taxi. It is designed to be a genuine off-roader and I think it is. It's got a look that should appeal to young adventurers and it's jammed with history. If you could do with a little bit more adventure in your life, drop in the City Toyota at their Netherlands or Perth dealership. We'll go to zoomtv.com.au and follow the links. I'm off to have some fun. Welcome back to Zoom TV. Now I'm here with another V8 supercar racing freak, Dean Fiore. How are you, sir? Good, thanks, mate. So, now, mate, I'll call you freak because anyone that gets in these boats is a freak. Yeah, that's what I thought when I first went for a ride, mate. They're incredible. Now, you've been brought down here, as have some of the other V8 supercar drivers, to enjoy a day out in the, uh, in the what, the jet boats. How have you found it? Uh, unbelievable. Honestly, the first, when I went for a ride, I just could not believe how they corner, you know? It's just, and it's so different to what we're used to. On throttle the corner, off throttle sort of a little bit when you're coming in between the corners. So it's totally different to what we're used to. Now, it's fair to presume that the guys that race these, I mean, one's going through as we're talking right now, they don't have the brain capacity that you V8s have. <laughs> Either that or they don't have any reason to live. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> That's what I thought when we first left the start line there. It's incredible. Now, as we see this one drive off, you're going to be absolutely blown away. But what were you thinking when you got to this point? Oh, this, this, the actual takeoff doesn't worry. You're telling me that that doesn't worry you? Freak. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, talking about things that don't worry you, you're a V8 supercar driver. You compete in one of the most gruelling sports there are. I don't think people understand that to actually drive those cars around and around a track, that wears your body out. That's why you're so... Look at you, ripped. <laughs> you're ripped. Yeah, you've got to be pretty fit. We train uh, every day, so whether it's cardio or, or weight training, I'm not that big, but you've got to be pretty strong and you've got to have um, endurance uh, about that because the race is so long, you know, so... Yeah. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that I'd like to know that people always write in and ask when I get a V8 supercar driver. How did you get involved? I uh, started in karting. The old man bought myself and my two brothers, uh, Todd and Paul, a go-kart each, and it just all went from there. It went from karting, Formula 4, to Porsche, and then into V8 supercars. Okay. Now, I think that some people could associate V8 supercar drives to a bus driver. All you do is you just sit down there and you just pick people up and you drive around. It's not that easy, is it? There's no. a lot of intense training behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we wear cool suits and uh, we've got helmet fans and stuff like that just to try and keep the temperatures down. But that's one of the things that kill us is the temperatures. Going to places like Clipsal and Darwin, it's over 60 degrees cabin temp. 
and you're in there for an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and it's all the G-forces on your body, and plus you've got to focus for that long as well. So it is hard work. Okay. Now, a couple of things I need to ask you. The Asanda Fast Five, the first car you ever owned. Uh, VL Commodore. There you go, cool. Mm, now, uh, the car you currently drive. Holden SV6 wagon. You have to say that, don't you? Wagon. Wagon, the pressure's on for the family. Mm, exactly. <laughs> What's your impression of the worst car ever made? The oversized esky looking things. What are they? The Nissan Micra? Now, this is an unbiased question. Don't right. worry about your sponsors okay. with this. I want you to put the blinkers on. Coffee. What is your favourite car? Um, if you could own a car, if you had any budget at all or you could get it from anywhere, wow. what car would you want to drive? Bugatti Veyron. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. The final last question is, what is your biggest fear? Um, biggest fear is losing a family member. Yeah, well, actually, actually, I haven't had that answer before. That's a fair question. Mm. Fair answer to a question. Mm. Well done, mate. It shows that you're a family man. Thank Good you. luck with everything in the V8s, and I hope you finish right up there at the end of the year. Thanks very much. OK, so thanks for watching the show. It's been a great show. We'd like to thank John Hughes and all the crew from Jeep that had us up here for the day. I enjoyed it, Dan. It was a wonderful day. Of course, if you want to become a Zoomaholic, what do you do, mate? You just go to zoomtv.com.au and become one. Don't forget, send in your one-minute video because we want to know more about the things that you love and get you on the show. Keys, mate. Keys, there you keys. Go, mate. go, go, go. Get in, get in. Doors locked, doors locked. Let me in. No. Doors Wait. locked. Doors. Quick, quick, quick. OK. Hi, mate. Oh, no. Hi, guys. We didn't, How you going? We didn't mean it, but thanks for having us. Seatbelt. No, 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 it's, it's OK. Fine. I think it's all right. Thanks for right. having us. Thanks for having us. Good, good, good. Jesus. That is f***ing me. Is he from home and I or something? Nah, 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 mate. Uh, Neighbours. And that's a wrap.